everybody. This is Tom Randall from Golden Care. I want to welcome you to the webinar today. This is part of our Integrity Short-Term Care Initiative training. And I had the pleasure to be joined here with my partner in crime, Dennis Reiner from uh, Golden Care. And Dennis has been in this market for a long time as of I. I'm in my 27th year here at Golden Care, and I've been privileged to have Dennis uh, work on and off with him and really close with Dennis these last few years for sure. And Dennis and, and I have both had the privilege uh, of going out and training a lot of consumers and a lot of uh, certainly a ton of agents uh, through the years. Dennis is a, is a real sales pro. So today he's going to do a lot of the training today and dig in to show you guys just how easy it is to start the conversation in this short-term care market. So Dennis, if you wanna jump in and say hi, make sure you can hear you. Yeah, you bet. Uh, thanks, Tom. And thanks everyone for taking time out of uh, your schedule this afternoon to join us. You bet. You bet. We love these uh, training sessions. Uh, Dennis and I have been doing a bunch of them. As you know, We've, I think we're doing 30 in, the, in a 25 business day period here. We're, we're right in the middle of it. And the, the ones that we enjoy the most are the the sales webinars because you know product training just is kind of product training that gets that gets a little bit old school but we know it's important that you understand the products but you as agents out there uh, I know a lot of you guys on this call might be Medicare agents who haven't really dived in or, and you certainly maybe haven't sold long term care but you you've done some short term care or none at all and so we got a wide scope of people but in the Medicare realms. And whether you're selling life or annuities or Medicare or whatever it might be, I always start with this slide. Dennis is probably tired of seeing it pop up these last uh, couple of weeks. But at the end of the day, you know, I always say it is so important when we talk to the leaders at Integrity about trying to come out and, and initiate this, this whole initiative. It was because of the fact that the facts don't change. You know what I mean? 70% of adults over 65 are going to require some type of extended care. And especially when we're talking about short-term care plans and home care plans like we have in this initiative, it's pretty easy to hit the claim trigger. So a lot of people will hit them for shorter claims for sure, like surgeries, et cetera. But even the extended care, that's the ones that we're worried about where it's really extended. And that's that's some of the things we can do with these products to help people out and really make it a lifesaver. So again, I, I don't kill you with stats, and I certainly don't use these a lot with clients as much as with agents, so you feel comfortable doing what you're doing. And unfortunately, even though those numbers are so high, the usage, 90% of Americans just haven't had the conversation. So uh, again, that 61% stat is just in the, in the height of COVID, how if there's one good thing COVID did for us is that it brought up to the forefront again, that people started understanding we need to have maybe need to look into planning so we don't go to a facility if we don't want to. So that's why you'll hear a lot of things as we train, like we told our long-term care agents a long time ago, we sold over a billion dollars long-term care in the day, and, and now we're moving really strongly into the short-term care these last few years. But one of the things we've told our agents, don't sell nursing home insurance. Most people buy this to stay out of the facilities, right? So you'll hear a lot of that. And even short-term care, you'll hear Dennis talking about the fact that when you're talking to your consumers about it, you don't want to really want to use the, the term long-term care or short-term care or nursing home insurance, et cetera. You want to use uh, more generic terms like extended care because we want to make sure we can get over. And we'll talk a little bit about that, how people think short-term care is only a 90-day policy, et cetera. So we'll talk a little bit about that. But uh, I'm going to turn it over to Dennis now, and I just want to let you know again before we do, if you know Dennis or myself, you know how passionate we are about this. We really know those stats don't change, and we really know that it's up to agents like you to go out and start the conversation to make sure you let people know we can get this done. And Dennis is going to talk a lot today about how easy it is to start that conversation. So all we're asking that you do is step a tiny bit outside your comfort zone and make sure that you at least say the words, because sometimes that's all it takes. And if we have time today, I always set Dennis up for his little story. But at the end here today, if we have time, he can maybe tell you a story about selling to somebody literally over breakfast in a five minute conversation just with a passerby. So it's really easy to turn people into the conversation and find out where they're sitting. And then they realize that, boy, they maybe missed something in their planning for their healthcare. So uh, I'll get off my soapbox here, Dennis, and I, I'll turn it over to you and maybe have you talk a little bit about the shifting market and a little bit of introduction. You bet. Hey, thanks, Tom. Yeah. Tom and I've collaborated over many years on different initiatives with uh large broker-dealer accounts, as well as uh, 
some large call center relationships. And so it's always, uh, it's always fun to work with someone that you respect and that you like, and that uh, you uh, really have uh, where you're like-minded. And so, you know, it's, it's no mystery that this market is shifting. I mean, the, the paradigm shift really is a, it, it's been coming for some time. I mean, if we went back and, and talked, you know, 15 years ago, the marketplace was the senior marketplace. That's the marketplace that we sold to early on in the long-term care space. Uh, average age being 72, very high placement ratios. But, you know, back then it was a push sale. We had to push people. And I remember, as Tom mentioned about doing consumer workshops, I remember in those early years, I'd ask consumers in the room when an agency would have me come in to do workshops on their behalf. And I'd say, how many of you ever looked into long-term care? And only one or two hands would go up. And then subsequently in these last years that we've been uh, have seen the market really mature and we do those same consumer workshops, virtually all the hands go up. Now the problem is those same 72 year olds and 65 year olds can't get coverage, you know? And so the agents and consumers have aligned on the same side of the aisle. They both are asking for the same thing. They want products today that have less underwriting. They want products today that are less complicated, less moving parts because Long-term care can be very complex, a lot of uh, lot of riders, a lot of moving parts, a lot of uh, elements to the plan design, and it's much more costly. And so the consumer and, and agents have demanded less cost. And so the paradigm shift is we we saw this coming, and and we've been on the front end of it. If, uh, if you've been on some of the previous calls, you may know that a couple of the products that we've worked with were at least a year in the making and, and uh, almost three years in the making uh, to bring them to market because – we had to make sure that these products were right and, and that they would resonate with the consumers. And so that paradigm shift is is real. And this market is, is going to grow uh, exponentially. Uh, it, it's, it will it just, you know, fasten your seatbelt because if you want to be in for the next wave, you're, you're on it right now with uh, the shifting market. So, Tom, as we talk about um, uh, things shifting, we also talk about the the reality that um, we we need to to know how to have the conversation and and Tom mentioned about our our experience and our our training and and uh, and of course all the things that don't work we don't like to share with you because those were you know we're not trying to have you walk through those same puddles we want you to avoid those puddles and and so having actionable strategies that that work we think makes sense so we've broken it down into what we call a five step uh, five steps to selling. Uh, having the conversation, our five-step selling process. And again, we're going to emphasize a little bit more on the Medicare space. And if we were talking to uh, agents today that were primarily doing annuity business or life business, there might be some some variation of, of this, but the steps are actually the same. It's just the talking points. And so, you know, the first one, when we talk about breaking the ice, it reminds me of, uh, of our Golden Care office, which is in Plymouth, Minnesota. I grew up in Southern California. Uh, you know, San Diego, I'm, was, I, I now live in Michigan, so don't, let's not, we don't have enough time in this conversation to, to go there. But every time I go to the Golden Care office and it happens to be winter and there's a couple uh, of the people missing, I wonder where they are. And they say, oh, they're out ice fishing. And, and so I've never been ice fishing, but I understand in order to get to the fish, you got to break the ice. And, you know, in order to get to the consumers, you also have to break the ice. And, and fortunately, the good news is most of these are your existing clients. You're not talking about taking a lead card uh, necessarily. You might be. But in most cases, the low-hanging fruit is, is, is the ones who you already have a relationship with. So it's very easy to break the ice and to start that conversation. And the best time to do it is at the end of any of your Medicare uh, interviews, where you're, you've done the enrollment and whether you're doing it uh, in person, um, you know, being face to face or whether you're doing it uh, remote with some screen sharing uh, uh, that the consumer see in your screen or whether you're just talking over the phone, it's very easy to say something like this. Oh, by the way, or before I forget, you know, and then you proceed to go on and, and basically say, hey, we've just taken care of uh, getting you enrolled for this year. And in your Medicare Advantage plan, or maybe it was a med sub, or maybe it was, uh, um, you know, uh, the prescription drug, uh, you know, the Part D benefit, whatever it might be, um, you have an opportunity, uh, pardon me, uh, to 
to basically just bring up this idea that you need to take care of, of the rest of their health care coverage. Um, and, you know, you can go through the alphabet a little bit, you know, the first four letters, the A, B, C, and D, and explain a little bit about each of those particular um, uh, 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 parts of Medicare. And we, we've teased a lot about, because it's not officially, uh, um, you know, part of Medicare, that Part E is really the extended care conversation, as uh, as Tom said. And so, you know, now uh, that, um, you know, again, that we've represented, you know, this, this need, you can go a little bit deeper. Um, it might be that you're just planting the seed. You might be planting the seed to, to come back after AEP or OEP. Um, it may be that you find that you've got sufficient time because uh, you've staggered your appointments that you can actually go on when you've got someone who's raising their hand and they want to learn more and they're actually interested. So now you can proceed to step two in the five-step process, uh, which is uh, breaking, uh, which is creating the desire. And Tom, feel free to jump in if there's any comment that you want to make along the way. You know, that was his way of saying, Tom, feel free to move that slide ahead like I'm asking you to. I, I'm kind of running the, the show over on this side. Uh, and again, Dennis and I are different locations. So I apologize if one of us is blaring and one of us is quiet or, you know, vice versa. But uh, yeah, sorry, I'll j definitely be jumping in. My biggest thing, again, is to stress to you guys, that's one of the hardest things training agents to say, you know, you just don't walk in and start talking to the, talking to the client and taking over the conversation before you build a little bit of breaking the ice and build a little bit of rapport. And I love the fact that we're working with existing agents now. And most of the people you're meeting with, like Dennis said, you've already, you're halfway there. So literally it's as easy as saying, Hey, before I let you go, I want to make sure that we find out if you got your extended care taken care of. And even kind of doing a Zoom close like that can start that conversation. So I'll turn it back over to Dennis. You're doing great, Dan. And let me know if you want me to jump in as well. Yeah, you bet, Tom. And, and you know, unlike the long-term care space where we spend an awful lot of time training agents on the need building, uh, we want this to be, uh, you know, very natural for them to think of, of, of this being an extension of their Medicare and um, not where in the long-term care space it's, you know, hey, it's nice to have. We want them to feel like this is a have to have. This is this is really part of what's missing, and that you need to make sure that you take care of it. And so, one of the things that, to keep in mind when you're creating the desire is that that clients, and I think your clients are probably like most clients, probably like the all the clients I had the opportunity of doing consumer workshops for, is that they don't always buy what they need, but they almost certainly always buy what they want. And there is differences there. You have to get them to want this. And the one, the wanting in terms of having the, the desire is, is really important to add that other half of their healthcare plan that's missing. So I'm going to give you several tips as we go through this, and you may want to write them down. And, and, and this is something I learned many years ago in my own. I had the opportunity, you know, I'm a certified financial planner by training. I had to I had an elder law attorney. I used to have two CPA partners many years ago when I was on the retail side of the business. And uh, one of the things I, I learned early on that I, again, sharing with agents actionable strategies was this, this tip, that whenever you want to introduce something that's new, in this case, the extended care conversation, always compare something new to something they already own and understand. Because at the end of the day, your client's my clients, Tom's clients, anyone who's on this call, your clients buy simple things. They buy things they understand. And all the things they don't understand, they come up with those manufactured ex excuses, the most famous being that they want to think about it. So again, compare it to that Medicare so that they can understand. And so how do we do that? How do we compare it to the Medicare? Well, we tell the client, that you know what, your existing Medicare coverage is what we call your immediate care coverage. It's immediate because it's it's your health insurance that you're gonna use now that, you're, uh, that you've aged in, you're gonna use it day in and day out. It's uh, for doctor visits, your prescription drugs, uh, that, whether they need to get filled or refilled. If you have a, a, a surgery and have to go to the hospital or even for ER visits. So you let them know that, hey, the natural extension of this is that you already have your immediate care, but what you don't have is your extended care. And the sole purpose of the extended care 
and this is another little phrase you may want to write down. I've used it, and I'll tell you, it resonates. And again, remember what I said at the very start, we're not going to tell you the things that don't work. So I always would say to clients that, remember, the extended care plan picks up where Medicare leaves off. And it's going to pay for those expenses that Medicare is not going to take care of. And so let me just repeat that again, that an extended care plan picks up where Medicare leaves off. You want to make them feel that this is natural, that this is a part of what's the, what's missing in their health care. And, and the fact is that some unplanned, unforeseen event uh, that could cause their health to change. And, and you can either go deep on this, you can just brush it over. It depends on as you listen to what they're telling you. And, and you know this, for those of you who are selling Medicare, you know how to read your client, whether you're reading them uh, on the Zoom call uh, or reading them because you're you're face to face. You determine, you know, do I need to go a little step further? Do I need to ask them, you know, in terms of uh, what circumstances do you think could ever cause your health to change? You know, it looks like you guys are in great health. I've been servicing your account here now for this X number of years. And uh, boy, you guys look look great. But, you know, our health can change on New York Minute. What could cause your health to change? And the important thing is, and we've said this in some previous training sessions, uh, about the importance of framing the question and then listening. And so that if you get to a situation where you end up with a roadblock, I'd rather have the roadblock early on, on the front end of our interview versus on the back end of the interview. And what I mean by that is if I... If the client says to you something along the lines of, hey, I don't think my health is ever going to change. I, we have no family history. So in other words, there's no recognition of the need. It tells you that then you really shouldn't go any further until you can establish that, that they'll admit to you that their health would change. And if they don't, you may know that it doesn't matter that this is an extension of their, of their um, uh, Medicare uh, plan and, and, the, and the half they don't have. They're, the old adage is true. A person convinced against their will is of, a, of the same opinion still. So remember, anytime you're asking people to reach into their pocket and pay for something, especially because this is not a zero premium, there is a cost to this, that they have to be convinced that this is something that they actually need. So you may go on and, and again, on creating the desire, you can go as deep or as short as you need to go. We're just trying to arm you, uh, you know, with enough material so that you know if you have to go there on personal experience or a family member, and if you have to talk about cost of care, just know that you're not going to spend the same amount of time the typical long-term care agent has, because these products are much simpler to uh, present, and they have less moving parts. And uh, and I, but you know, you just need to be prepared so that you know how to navigate through this five-step process. And I like to say when we talk about the cost of care, illustrate to them again about this out-of-pocket cost and how Medicare is not going to take care of that. And gee, have you ever looked at what the cost is for home care, Bob and Mary? Or have you ever looked at, had a friend that went into a facility? Oh yeah, let them begin to tell you a story. Their story is obviously more powerful than than the story that you've prepared to tell. And so you may want to to kind of create this security in numbers, say something like this. My clients are very smart. And when I've had these kind of discussions with them, like I'm having with you right now, my clients have quickly figured out that instead of hurting mom, now I'm using the I'm using M O M mom figuratively speaking, and they say, "What do you mean by mom? Uh, you know, how would I hurt my mom?" Oh, I'm sorry. Let me explain. Mom stands for my own money because that's how you're going to have to pay for this if you don't have a plan. Boy, if you want something that resonates with them, that that's a little. Uh, uh, part of the conversation that you will get them leaning in because they get it. Instead of just saying, oh, your out-of-pocket cost is going to be X. Talk about hurting mom. And uh, and then you can go on to say that, you know, uh, because they are uh, are not wanting to hurt mom, they, they want to use another strategy, and I call it OPM. That's other people's money. And, of course, that's what you're doing right now with your Medicare plan. You're not using your money to finance your healthcare costs, you're using the insurance company's money. And it's the same works with extended care. And so you make, you know, you break this down, you make it simple, you make it conversational, you let them know that your other clients are like them, they're smart, 
And wouldn't you agree this is the best way to solve this problem? You know, again, you don't have to go real deep on number two, but you should be prepared to go wherever that conversation takes you. And step three uh, uh, is what we call health matters. Yep. And, and uh, Dennis, Dennis, if I just jump in there. Yeah, you uh, got it. One of the things that, you know, when this, this is starting a conversation and we have a, another webinar we did recently, and I, I think we probably have another one on the schedule coming up about objections. And that's that goes a little bit deeper and talks about how you actually answer objections ahead of time in the in the actual developing of the need and stuff. So you show people that you're on top of your game and it's not hard. That's the part we really want to make you understand is that, again, long term care, tons of moving parts, lots of things to explain. Short term care, very simple. And if people are saying, well, I don't know, long term care, a lot of times we get the I don't know if I'll ever use it. Dennis knows that. And that's why some of those hybrid policies took off because of the life insurance chassis, et cetera. But with short term care, if you go on any of our product trainings, you're going to learn really quickly. These products, number one, can be super robust or super scaled down to be really affordable for anybody. And you can write like a million dollar policy we talk about that you can write some really big plans. But at the nice part about these short term care plans that you'll learn really quickly if you haven't already is that the triggers are so light compared that compared to long term care where you just need help with two of six activities of daily living like bathing or dressing or a cognitive impairment, but the ADL is where it's all at. Long-term care says you need to have help for 90 days. That's why that product ends up being a little bit more complicated. And people say, well, boy, there's a lot of things I won't get any coverage for. Short-term care, again, not to get too deep in product, but I want you to make sure you understand how easy it is to convince people that they'll use it and they might need it, is that these are indemnity policies. They pay regardless of any other insurance you might have in place or anything else. If you hit the claim triggers, and again, you're going to have things like surgeries, minor you know, hip replacements, things that you never would have for long-term care, if you're familiar with LTC, these short-term care plans pay out a lot more often, and they and they restore benefits very, very easily as well. So again, I'm, I know I'm diving into product there, but I wanted to make sure we covered that it's very easy to develop the need as well, Dennis. So go ahead. Well, you know, Tom, it, it it's really important, and again, it's all part of. And we can refer you back to the to the site. We'll show you this at the end. But we have this recorded training, and Tom mentioned about overcoming objections. We've been we we've done a webinar on that. That's a little bit more full blown. Uh, I've done a, a, a you know we have a little simple recording. Tom's done some great product recordings. So the key to keep in mind when you get to the health aspect is remember your client. And you, in particular, if you have not done sold a lot of products that require underwriting, you might get a little bit nervous, thinking, "Hey, I'm a little uncomfortable. I'm not, you know, I'm, I, I don't know uh, these various conditions." And the client might be a little uncomfortable, thinking that you know they just enrolled in that MA plan and there was no, no questions that were asked. So you have to emphasize in this uh, step three that these pl these plans, these extended care plans. They don't come with an automatic enrollment, but they just have the company, because of the risk that's involved, does ask a few health questions to make sure that you would be eligible. And now Tom will turn over and kind of walk you through a little bit of on the health matters, just and, and maybe some tips here on what you can do when you're actually covering that, some, our, some of our recommendations, and then we'll pick back up and I'll probably jump back in as well as we move on to cover these five steps. All right, perfect. Yeah, and that is one of the things, like you said, once you once you talk a little bit with your clients, you ask a simple question to start that conversation. And then, you know, we usually teach our agents uh, at all levels just to say, you know, at the end of the day, I want to make sure you know a couple things. First of all, nowadays, these products, we have several in our portfolio, and I'll show you the products we have available, obviously, before we go today. But I want you to know that nowadays you kind of buy these products almost more with your health than you do with your checkbook because the companies are looking for different things. And, and the, what I want to make sure you're comfortable with is remember, I know that, you know, you're a 65 year old people start worrying about, Oh, I don't know if I want to deal with this because of the health. These are very simple health questions I'm going to ask you. And I want to make sure you know to relax because, you know, I'm talking to you right now over the phone. I don't think you're in a nursing home or assisted living, or you're not receiving home health care right now. Right. You know, can you perform activities of daily living like bathing, dressing, eating, et cetera, those simple day-to-day -day things? I figured you could, right? Almost everybody I talk to can. So what I want to make sure you understand is 
if you can do that, I already have a product that I can get you in all 50 states that will protect you. So I have something for sure that I can protect you with. So as I go through, if you don't mind, what I'm going to try to do is just spend a couple minutes with you asking a couple other health questions. And once I do that, then I'm going to be able to make a recommendation and find the best policy for you. Okay. And again, you guys, this is not rocket science. What I'm going to show you as agents is that you can be as broad or as simple as you want to go here. Okay. So literally some agents are going to get to the point where all they're going to say is, you know, let's look at your health. Have you been hospitalized or had anything major in the last five years that you can think of? And tell them, you got to be honest on this because this will help me make my recommendation. And then what kind of meds are you taking? And when I ask this, I don't want you to feel like, well, great, Tom, here's the smoking gun. Medicare was a little simpler. I don't have to go to med school to do this, where this seems like I'm going to have to start understanding all these different things. You really don't. It's, it's a lot like Medicare, where you're going to take the meds and you can punch them right into a tool I'll show you, and you'll see which policies will accept them, et cetera. So... All you have to do is make sure, and Dennis talked a little bit about listening. 70% of your sales should be listening to the people. Don't just preach at them. Make sure you listen. I know Dennis and I are on this webinar, and you're all muted, and we're just yapping at you. But a sales process, obviously, is much different. Make sure you pause every once in a while. Ask them if that's okay. Now, the next part of it, to find out which policies will work for, that, for you, for that client, Sometimes you're going to do the, the work ahead of time if you know you're meeting with somebody. That's the easiest for you. Uh, and we do have several ways you can do this. This first one is on the site. We'll show you where you can get at it. But this is called our InstaPivot tool. And I'll tell you what, it's been received really well across the industry at people at all different levels, Wiley veterans or people who are just starting out in short-term care. You don't have to use this tool. Some of you will choose just to say, I'm going to go off the app. I'll cover that in a second. But if you wanted to use a tool like this, this is much easier than what it looks like. Basically, across the top here, you probably can't read it super well, are all the products in our Integrity Short-Term Care Initiative, okay? We all the way over from True Freedom, which is a prepaid membership plan. It's not even insurance. All the way over to the home health care only plans, to our Omniflex uh, that has two-tiered underwriting, Wellaby, which has two-tiered underwriting, and these are comprehensive short-term care plans and GTLs recover cash short-term care. And on the left-hand side down here, this scrolls down to 45 different rows, and it's literally every different health condition that every one of these apps questions you on to see if you can get coverage, okay? And that's how easy this is. You can go in right away and say, I'm gonna meet somebody in Alabama or I'm with somebody from Alabama. You click down on this select state, and it would say Alabama is a drop down. You click it, and these little blue bars up here would turn green if that product's available in that state. Again, this is a static uh, picture that I'm showing you, so I can't demonstrate, but we'll show you where to get at this at later. Then, when I said all these different conditions, you don't have to scroll down and read them all. You can go up to the keywords up here, start typing in, you know, for multiple for MS, start start typing multiple, and it'll show up on there. Click the button and every row will disappear besides the one that has to do with MS. And you'll see exactly what policies cover in that state for that condition. And you can do multiple conditions. We've got over a thousand medications in here that you can click in the medication and you can do up to 15 of them for one client and it'll narrow it down to show you which ones it'll prove. So it's very, very strong at the home office level and for a lot of agents who really decided to roll up the sleeves and aggressively go out and sell short-term care okay that's all i'm going to say about this today and we have full training on this needless to say and dennis i don't know if you want to add anything or not uh to the uh, to the insta no i think that's I, I think you've said all there tom i mean it, it is good to have the tutorial but what you're going to talk about next is really important that um uh and a couple of recommendations here as you as you go through tom's going to show you how easy he's just using omniflex as a uh, uh as the example uh, he might yep. even touch a little bit on Wellaby, and yep. we could have yep. used any of the carriers, GTL as well. But this, these are, again, just trying to give you an example of of what the questions look like and then the best way that you approach it with the with the client. Because remember, this may not be the area. You might say, hey, I'm a great salesperson, but I'm really this this underwriting stuff scares the heck out of me. And it's really straightforward and it's really not not difficult. But if you haven't yeah. done it, you just need to spend a little time here. 
Yep. And again, that's that's a good lead in, Dennis, because we're just using Omniflex and I have a Wellby example too, and I'm not going to go through read all these, so don't panic on me. But at the end of the day, what we're trying to show you is some of you will say Manhattan Life's a great company. I sold a lot of med stuff with them or I sold a lot of other products with them and I really, I feel comfortable using Omniflex. So if it's available in that state, I might just pivot to that. Same thing with Wellby and GTL. You might say I sell a lot of Medico or Wellby uh MF or MedSupps, and you might say, I'm going to go and use the Wellaby product if it's available in that state. So that's fine too, because at the end of the day, Dennis and I'll really stress to you, these people need help and all these products are good and all of them have their own niches. So at the end of the day, you just want to find a product they can qualify for and get something in place because they're all going to do a great job at claim time. So this Omniflex app, these are not like long-term care where you got a 40-page application and you're going through 10 pages of underwriting. With these plans, it's very simple. You can see here, part one, answer yes to any of these five, and we're going to knock you out. So what a lot of our agents do, and we've had a call center that have used no screen sharing at all, and they've had tremendous success already selling these short-term care products, just talking to people. So if you have a screen share, it just makes it easier, right? And basically what you tell them is, you buy these with your health. Can I ask you a few questions to start with? Number one, this product is one of the one of the stronger products out there. Let me ask you a couple broad questions. And then you just go through here. And again, I won't read them to you, but hey, do you have AIDS or HIV? The next one, are you medically disabled? The next one, do you need help with activities of daily living? All the way down here, these are really broad, broad topics. So you can see with this plan, like some of the others, it's a very broad underwriting. So you can get by with just a couple questions. And you can see here, all these different things down below is cancer besides uh, skin cancer. Most of the people you'll talk to are going to be okay through this part. Okay. And then I think I showed the part two here. You just have your application open on your other screen or on the screen you're sharing. The part two, these aren't even knockouts for Omniflex. These are just to say, if you get a limited plan or a full-blown plan, so then you say, boy, that's good. It, it looks like you're going to qualify for one of the best plans out there. Uh, let me ask you a couple more questions just to see how much coverage I can get you. Uh, in the last couple of years, have you had a stroke or a TIA? And then these, again, are not knockouts. These are just to see if I can sell a full-blown $400 per day facility and 300 home care or if I have to limit it to $100. And you'll learn that in our product training and we have all these tools available for you on the site, we'll show you as well. So this is easy stuff, okay? So some of you might decide to do that. Find out if it's available in my state. And I like Wellaby, if it's available in that state, I'm gonna say, here's Wellaby, same deal, right? Do you need help with activities of daily living? They have a two-tiered underwriting system as well. And it'll say, here's the next questions. And if you answered yes to the questions two through six, then you get a secondary insured plan, okay? Otherwise you can get the essential care or essential care plus. So very simple stuff. Again, I'm not reading you and I'm going through quickly today because we're talking about sales more than underwriting. But I do want you to know, that's how simple this can be to go through and find out if somebody qualifies for your care. And we have the tools available. We have pre-need little questionnaires if you want to do it that way. But I do want you to know a lot of agents get scared if they've never done short-term care and they think this is going to be a med school deal. It's not. It's very, very simple and very easy to figure out what product's available for who. Dennis, I'll turn it back over to you if that's okay. Yeah. Hey, thanks, Tom. That's great, great information. And, you know, back to that call center story that Tom shared, uh, <clears throat> Tom and I both have tag teamed the training on that, and I've had the opportunity to actually go down to their physical uh, site to be on site with them training. And uh, what's interesting is that their number one person that has sold is, I, I think it's like not just extended uh, care, there's been other ancillary sales and standalone home care sales, but I think it's somewhere around 175 sales by this one uh, call center agent in the last four months. And... Um, Pretty amazing. And again, in the persistency or the placement on that business, um, and remember, this is someone who's not meeting face to face and not even doing remote, is nearly 80%. And we're placing about 90% of this business, as Tom said. So if you can pre screen the correct way, um, it's you're you're pretty well assured. And if you have to go to the, you know, the plan B, which is a, a standalone home care or even the, you know, the plan C, the true freedom, uh, you're talking about, you know, virtually you know 98 to 100 uh, percent or i'll just say 99 percent uh, uh placement 
And so keep in mind also with that underwriting that Tom's talking about, this is not like when they go to get a life insurance uh, uh, policy that has a certain high death benefit. And so they have to have a, a physical or a paramed, they have to give fluids. You know, no, there's none of that. There's there's no uh, asking for medical records. The only time the companies will even call to clarify is if they see something after with a pharmacy check that requires that. But it's not a phone interview like you have with, with long-term care. So as we set the stage and you're ready now to, because as Tom said, you've, you've kind of listened and now you're trying to establish kind of the, 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 the boundaries, if you will, of where you can go from a, from a, a premium standpoint. And remember the plan design that we're showing you here is just to give you an example. We just called it classic premier ultimate. There's no, you know, just to give you a, you know, a name, uh, we could have said good, better, best. And it just shows the uh, characteristics if it was a hundred dollars a day for both facility and home care, um, two hundred dollars a day uh, for uh, facility and home care, and, and four hundred as Tom said, loading up the plan. You can begin to see, and it's a good little cheat sheet for you to have something like this, so that you know maybe if you're going out and again trying to prepare in advance of your call, uh, you could actually in preparing in advance you could actually have several quotes because you know your client's age. But if you didn't happen to have it and it was just an on the on the spot situation, always have something that kind of gives you those bookends so that you can determine again where you want to go. And we're not going to get into you know we have a separate webinar just on plan design, but the, the characteristics of setting the stage center around really uh, three components, which is your your client's current age, their current health that this Tom just walked us through, and what their current budget is. And remember that. That individuals today, there's there's two sides of this, and we and we cover this in some other training about the, the balance of logic and emotion. And so emotionally, they might be thinking, "Gosh, I need to have that four hundred dollars a day, three hundred dollar a day home care because they had a family member that went through it." But they look at that and they're seventy years of age and saying, "Boy, we couldn't afford the three hundred and five dollar a month premium uh, per person." And so remember, you're trying to give people some coverage. Don't make it feel feel make them feel as though that the solution that they choose um, is inadequate. The solution they choose is gonna be best for them based on their health and based on their budget. And so it's important also that when you're in the setting of the, setting the stage, setting the table, whatever you wanna uh, call it, is I, I'll share with you another phrase that, that has been helpful to me over the years, because it's also a way for it to remind me when I've done um, my own sales, and it goes like this. Multiplying words divide attention, which simply means keep your presentation simple. And multiplying insurance options divide interest. Now, it's okay to have insurance options, but what's not okay is to have multiple carriers where you're going to go in and you're going to say, hey, I'm going to show you Wellaby, I'm going to show you GTL, and I'm going to show you Manhattan. And then the client at the end of the time together is going to say, well, I want to think about it because they're going to walk away with indecision because you basically, you know, in your listening, you're trying to give them information overload versus being able to have assessed through those steps one, two, three, and four now what their goals and objectives are, what their budget requirements are. And then what you should be able to do is just lead. And as Tom said, you you know, you might have your favorite carrier and uh, and make sure though that your favorite carrier, if it's, you know, Omni or if it's Wellaby or GTL, that that client's going to be able to, based on state availability and based on uh, their health, that they're going to be able to get that coverage. But you know, showing a showing either a, a two option or three option uh, allows people to you know where you can manage the expectation and kind of create an alternative, uh, what we call as you know in the sales world an alternative close, where you're going to you know maybe you want to show them the higher option and, and then default to the to the uh, you know, all the way to the extreme low and then settle in the middle. So it all depends. There's lots of different strategies on how to do that. But the main thing is that what you're doing is you're trying to, you know, find out what what is going to work. And as Tom said, this is a short-term care example. If you know already that, hey, they're only going to be a standalone home, home health care home health care uh, uh, client, those rates are really easy. Yes, there's software for that kind of stuff, but mo most of those brochures with Manhattan and GTL and even the true freedom, the rates are just listed uh, uh, and, and they're not, you don't have to do much calculation. 
uh, there as well. Any more thoughts, Tom, on setting the stage before we move to the final uh, implementation? I know we want to, we're, we're bumping up where we have just a few minutes left, and I know we want to show them the site, so I don't want to go too long on implementation, but there's a nope. couple of things just to make, make sure that they're mindful of. Yeah, no problem. No, go ahead, Dennis. I'm actually going to just let you go on that because you did a good job there showing that that price chart. And we're trying to put those together, by the way, and there's little state differences here and there. So we'll have it on that site at some point where I'm going to try to have a, a cheat sheet for different ages for, for all the different plans. And hopefully that'll be something that some agents might use. And hopefully we'll put something together that'll work well for you. So go ahead, Dennis. Perfect, Tom. Yeah, I mean, most of us today living in this technology world that we're in are transacting business with an e-application, but some of you on this call may say, hey, I I like to touch that paper. I want to do a paper app. So no matter how you're actually going to enroll someone, I would have encouraged you also, as Tom was talking about the health matters, to have printed out that application, even if you're going to go to the e-app, because it'll, it'll help to uh, keep it top of mind on those particular questions. But now, you know, when you go through the application process, say, hey, the enrollment's real easy. I want, uh, I already have a lot of this information because I've worked with you for years. You've already shared with me the health health aspect. Uh, we talked about the plan that, that you selected. Do you feel good about that? Is that, is that gonna be comfortable? We wanna make sure that that's sustainable for you, that it's gonna fit your budget and you're not gonna find yourself being you know, squeezed, uh, I want to make sure you're comfortable that both of you can have a plan that you can stay with um, and that is not, uh, you know, not going to cause any, uh, that you know, it's, it's not going to cause any concern in the future. And then when you go through, the e-app takes less than 15 minutes to actually complete. Obviously, a, a paper app could be really quick as well because you've already done the, the illustration. If you don't need an illustration, even on the e-app, then it's probably you know, even uh, you can cut that time down in half. But remember, after you go through, then the, the next process is to talk about next steps. You tell the client what they should expect, what the timeline is. Remember, this is not long-term care that's going to take 45 days and then have the carrier come back and say, oh, gee, Mr. Smith, you're a 75-year-old client, and because of your health, we had to decline you. The, the turnaround time with these is two to four days, typically on average. And make sure... The last thing on implementation before Tom takes us to the to the site uh, is make sure that when you wrap things up, that you go through that cool down. You spend a few minutes, you know, maybe look for opportunities, whether it's to ask for referrals or whether it's just to make sure that you've re-solidified what it is. You know, they're making a decision now. They may have already made that earlier decision on Medicare. So here they feel like you don't want them to be overwhelmed that they're doing so much in, in one day. And that's why you may be coming back to see someone and, and, and have that conversation. You may not be doing it at the time of, uh, of uh, your Medicare interview. But again, and there's some twists on this as it relates to uh, whether or not you were selling clients that have annuities or, or life. Um, but by and large, those five steps are really, if you, if you follow that track, I think it will it'll help you to navigate through that process and, and, and bring that client to a successful conclusion. And so, absolutely. you know, yeah, absolutely, Dennis. And again, this this slide is just I'm going to go over to the site real quick. But before I do, I just want to stress that when we went through this in our initial, you know, establishing the why webinar, we talked about the why. And for you folks who have been listening now to us, yeah, Patrick, for a while and, and give you some of the background on starting the conversation, I'm going to jump right to the why. You know, the who is easy. It's your existing clients. But the why not only those stats I talked about earlier that I'm passionate about that we need to help those gray-haired Americans, a big part of this, and make sure you understand, we know this isn't a hobby for you guys. So if you're an agent out there, don't kid yourself. There's huge pluses that we talk about that not only do you help people, which I've always believed you, you, you successful by helping as many people as possible, but also just for yourself, you you really help lock in your Medicare sale or whatever sale you're making by having multi lines. We all know those stats on persistency. And you've established yourself as a hero to this family, or at least as a trusted advocate to go out and go beyond what you usually do and help them on other aspects of their life and educate them a little bit on some of the needs for this in the future. So Dennis, I'm going to go over to the website. You can add to that if you'd like, Bond, heading over there if you, if you think. Yeah, you perfect, Tom. No, you said it well. And I think that the 
the the key is don't be afraid to have the conversation and don't be afraid to step up to the plate. I mean, you, you might feel like you're going to swing and miss. And, uh, and I'm going to tell you, uh, it, it, the, there's an old adage, and I think it's so true, that that which you persist in doing becomes easier. It's not that the task has changed. It's just your ability to perform it has increased. And and so you'll find that this will be old hat. It'll be as old hat as what you do with Medicare after you've done it a couple of times. As Tom said, money becomes the byproduct of the service, you know. Uh, the money will take care of itself. But if you if you go in there with a servant's heart that you're really there to help more people, I think you'll find um, they'll know how sincere you are, especially those existing relationships. And so the site that we have is powerful. It's uh, it's it's um, it's it's kind of a one stop shop for everything that you need. And Tom, I'll let you kind of just uh, give a high level overview, and then we'll wrap it up. You bet. I'll do it real short because I know we went. Went our whole time already today. We had some good stuff for you. This site is the Integrity STC site that your marketer who got you on this call uh, has probably steered you to already. And it's one of those things that you'll know. We don't just toss you out of the plane and hope your parachute opens. We want you to know we have the tools available to make your job very easy to go out and help your clients. And we can make it simple to do that. Here's that Insta Pivot tool. You click on this and you'll have access to that. The sales and marketing I'll come back to, but down here with the products, all the different products, here's our three products we we highlight in our short-term care initiative for integrity. And down here are the home health care plans we talked about. These are the two insurance products and then our true freedom that's available in all 50 states. And we do have maps on here and everything to show you exactly where all these products are available. Or like I said, in the InstaPivot tool, you can find that as well. But once you go over to the sales and marketing area, It'll bring you over here. Here's some nice stats about extended care. And more importantly, down here, you see way at the bottom, there's some informative videos. These are great. Dennis uses years and years of expertise to talk about back to the basics and personalizing plans, et cetera. And then up here, we have more videos underneath here that you can click on. And there's a drop down menu where you can hear, hear a bunch of uh, recorded videos to help you out. Then we go down to our Insta Pivot tool again access to that to make sure you can find it wherever you are on the site. And then we have the marketing materials here for agents that if you have other agents you want to contact or get involved. And then we have marketing assets on the consumer side. And this consumer side assets are a whole zip file that you can click on and you'll get a bunch of different tools that you can use to put on your social media or to contact and emails for your clients. And again, this is a living, breathing site. So you'll see more and more tools that'll pop on here. And then underneath each product, there's also sales and marketing tools that are product specific. So it doesn't limit it just to this by any stretch. So you'll see all that information. Again, I'm not gonna walk you through the whole thing today, but make sure you check it out. And I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Dennis, I think- Yeah, I, close yeah, I think, Tom, um, yeah, I think we, we did a, uh, this is one of my favorite topics that we that we cover because it really is uh, where the rubber meets the road that we're teaching agents. And remember, at the end of the day, you are trying to you don't want to have your clients react to this problem and call you up when it's too late and uh, and wish that they would have you know um, you know taken out a particular plan. We say all the time that you know when people need care, it becomes the single biggest. Uh, uh, unplanned, unforeseen, unfunded liability that they'll ever face, far greater than any anything probably that they'd ever experienced as far as the costs associated with their own health care coverage. And this truly can wipe people out. And so, you know, they need your help. And, uh, and again, there's so many out there today that are really mm -hmm. unprotected and they're un underserved. And so it, it's, uh, it's all of our missions to do to do that, to go out and to you know, to, um, you know, I guess, it, 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 you know, share this extended care uh, opportunity. Uh, we're sharing it with you and you need to share it with your clients. So thanks everyone. I know Tom, you always like to wrap it up with a final comment. Yep, no problem. And again, the next step is up to you. And I, we see it all the time, you guys. I know some of you on this call might be on the fence thinking, oh, do I want to dive into one more thing and open up one more brochure and learn one more product? All I can tell you is this, we've seen it with this product, especially uh, unlike long-term care that's a little deep rooted. this thing, once we see an agent who takes that first step, gets appointed and, and dares have the first conversation, 
and writes that first app, then we see bing, 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 and we see a bunch more production because I promise you, you're going to be pleasantly surprised. These are not that hard to get in place. And it's one of one of those things where you got to look yourself in the mirror and say, hey, I'm going to make a lot more first year commission and renewals on these nice products, but I got to take that first step and just dare bring up that conversation. And I promise you this, if you do it, I think you'll thank me later because it is something that I think you'll help your clients and help yourself as well. So that being said, Tom Randall, again, with my pal, Dennis, want to tell you, thank you so much for taking the time and letting us jump on board with you today. Contact the marketer who got you on this webinar, take the next step and help your clients and help yourself. And hopefully we'll see you on another webinar. Thanks everybody. Thanks, everyone. Bye for now. Talk to you soon. The next step is yours. Contact your marketer for more information and to start offering short-term care solutions to your clients. And be sure to sign up for our other short-term care hot topic webinars.